Hey, it's V from the A-Team, and today is kind of a special episode because we are at EVS Studios, Gear for Filmmakers in Los Angeles, and we are outfitting their white psych with lights that we're gonna rig up top. So I have five brand new Aperture Novas that I get to play with today. So I'm excited, let's go. This is Toby, he's the rentals and operations manager here. Toby, what is it that you do here? Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's a little bit of everything. It's uh, maintaining the stages, booking the stages, booking the rental gear, buying equipment, uh, a little bit of all of it. So, what kind of clients do you usually get? Uh, we deal with a lot of uh, documentary, music video, uh, lower budget short film, reality. Being as versatile as possible in a space like this, whether it be lit tungsten, daylight, having full color control. Those are the things that we're looking for in a stage. This is the Ari Alexa Mini, and we got a Cook Prime here. Which one are we shooting with? The 50, right? 50. We are going for two looks today. We're going for the more clean cut, sort of commercial look, one that you would see in any Apple commercial, Neutrogena commercial, just a very clean white. And then we're going for hey, let's change the colors. Let's make it more interesting. Because with music videos, anything goes. We gotta decide how we're gonna distribute these five lights. We have Peyton here, who is our CLT, or otherwise known as Gaffer. Uh, are you excited about these Novas? Amazing, I'm ex super excited. I'm excited to open them. This is like major it's unboxing. Five There's five, we have to unbox five Novas, but I got my multi-tool, it has a knife in it. So <laughs> let's go for it. The great thing here is that um, they are all Bluetooth compatible. So it's like a Bluetooth mesh. So we can hook it up to the Sinus Link app, but we don't really need to have these control boxes yep. at our fingertips. So we're gonna place these lights up there to work for both of our setups. Uh, five lights in total that we have to play with. Super. I'm gonna meter these lights that are in here right now so that when we put the Novas up, that they're more or less even in uh, their exposure values. So I have ISO 800 out here, and I'm just gonna take an incident reading. The idea is it should stay at eight the entire time. So it's really even across the whole thing. So those Novas over there, they've just been Bluetooth reset. So all I have to do to enter them in is I'll create a new scene, go in there, press plus, and then new fixtures. The Novas should all pop up here. So I'll go one, two, three, four, and set up. I'll have one that's designated as backlight, and then we'll have left, center, right, and then our key. That way you're not reading like the name of the Nova, E7AC40. It actually just says what it is. To that beam, we are rigging the Nova using the junior pin. So the C-clamp up there has a junior receiver, and then we're going to stick this in there. We're using this C-clamp into a piece of wood that's existing in the stage. So we're using the cable safety's aircraft cable to safety it off to the existing pipes, and now that's safety it off, and now we'll go get the light and do that. Now that we've put the Novas up there, I'm gonna take readings again and see if they match what we had before. So let's see here, five, six, already good. So this is reading at an eight. Uh, let's take the center one down about 15% and see what that's gonna be. It's because of these two lights are, you know, are bleeding into the center. So our center is becoming a hot spot. 5.6, look at me knowing exactly how much to turn it down. Nailed it. Let's talk about clamps. Uh, we are clamping our main lights onto obviously the grid, but we have um, another pipe with Cheeseboro clamps. And then onto that, we're clamping with these babies. So this is a, a junior pipe clamp. So junior receiver, and then this is a pipe clamp. These are specifically made to go on pipe um, as opposed to using an assortment of other clamps that you shouldn't use because they're not as safe. Um, this is sized and, it, and it's also a safety thing too. It's sitting on the pipe here. It wants to sit there. Mm. It doesn't want to fall off automatically. Um, and then you use a wrench to tighten this down and you want to just tighten it until you get contact in a little quarter turn. 
Some people might disagree about that, but what you certainly don't want to do is tighten it all the way Jamming into it, the yeah. pipe so that you're damaging the pipe and nullifying some of the safety features of this. Well, there's also, speaking of safety, you have Correct. another safety chain here as well. And that's what we were sort of talking about earlier. This isn't to safety the light tube because what this is actually to safety the clamp to something. So in case somehow this clamp that's way overbuilt fails, then it still is gonna be able to hold the light up and not fall. And then uh, this is a version of a stirrup hanger. So you actually can extend, like you were talking about earlier, sort of the idea that if you're using the pipe grid, this lets you put mm. the thing anywhere. This is the same thing, but for vertical. So you can hang this anywhere on the pipe grid and then if, if you wanna have the light lower, or yeah, you so can it's like telescoping, this so this exactly. one, it extends. I've seen these a lot on like um, multi-cam sitcom stages because all of the lighting there is is rigged up top or for yeah. the most part, because it is multi-cam, you don't want it stands to be in the way of all your other cameras. So you do want those lights, flags, scrims, diffusions, they're all mounted up there right. on these. Yeah, and they, uh, they do a whole bunch of different looks like we were talking about yeah. as well, so it's like, even if the stage changes from one from the library to the kitchen or something like that, mm -hmm. they have different looks. And they're all pre-built and pre-programmed, so they exactly. just like, okay, now it's the kitchen right. look. Okay, so we have these three lights. These are our psych lights, our left, our center, and our right. I set the outer ones at 10%. I set the center one at 5% because we have this large softbox in the front that's also playing on our background. So you have to understand that it's compounding the light that's going onto the background. Therefore, this center light doesn't need to be as intense. We're sort of playing our intensities based on this front light intensity. This is already at 100%, so we can't make it any brighter. And I don't wanna blow out the background too much. So we're trying to keep an even exposure, keeping in mind our skin tones. Can we stop up to like a, four. yeah, can we stop up to like a three, two? Let's see what that looks like. Right there. You might think that just because it's all white, or in this case, it's all 3200, it's all tungsten, it doesn't matter, but it does. And it is super helpful to take into account what is the intensity of your key light, how many key lights do you have, and what are the skin tones of your talent. Say you don't have a light meter, uh, you can always pop up false color on your monitor and that could show you what the hotspots are doing or what the safe area is. So right now, for example, I have all of the backlights, all of the lights on the psych set at 10% each. And you can see there's a hotspot that's happening right behind our talent. So if I take this down to 5% in the middle, you can see now it's all an even wash across and that is actually exactly what our meter was showing us earlier. Right here on the floor, we are a little bit under the right. rest of the thing. So two yeah, solutions, on our cove, right? on our cove there. On our cove there. Well, when we have the false color off, you can't really see it that clearly unless you're, you have eagle eyes and you're really looking for it. So turning that false color on, you can start seeing that this is a little lower. So either we bring in another light we adjust the lights up there, or we simply just frame it out by pushing the dolly in. If the client is on set personally, I want the client to see as close to what might actually it look like in the edit as possible, which is why you want a LUDed image. Because if you don't put a LUD on your monitor, the client might fall in love with, with the, the flat yeah. look. And then they'll just be like, well, what, why is this all now colored? We really like that gray look. And <laughs> I mean, it's a choice. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're lit for our high key commercial look. Let's see what it looks like. That's it for our commercial lighting setup. We're gonna move on to our music video setup. Keeping the lights still up on the grid exactly where they are, but now we have full color control. And we're going to adjust this top light right here because right now it's a big soft source. We're gonna change it to a smaller source that's a little bit more directional and move it closer. So it's less of a front light and more of a toppy light. Again, the whole point is that everything stays on top and any lighting changes we do are 
super quick. For the second setup, we want to do a couple of effects, meaning we want lights to come on at certain times at certain speeds. But before that happens, I actually like to set the look with all the lights on, right? It's a lot easier, it's a lot faster to set it with all the lights on. So in this case, uh, we wanted sort of like a moody, contrasted music video vibe. So we started with her outfit, which is a blue dress. So the backlight is blue to complement that blue dress. Now something that also complements blue is green. So we made the background green here and we have to turn it low so that it's actually visible. Um, if we turn it up too high, then it sort of blows out and it becomes in the range of white. So we have our background at around I would say 5% intensity, no more. This is magic program inside of Cytus Link. And you can see each of the lights is programmed for a different frame that they turn on in a different duration. So if I press play, it starts with just the backlight, very moody, and then the psych wall comes up, becomes green. It mixes with the backlight to create more of a teal than a solid green. And then this one, our key light comes up very softly from the front. Let's get our talent in and let's shoot this thing. Well, that is how we outfitted this studio with Aperture Novas. We learned about rigging, exposure, how to program lights, how to use color. Thank you so much, Toby, for letting us come here. No problem. Uh, if people want to find EVS, where can they find you? Uh, hit us up at evsonline.com or our Instagram, EVS Camera. You can shoot here, use these Aperture lights, uh, or any of our other stages. We're here in Glendale, so hope to see you soon. Literally these same units. And Peyton, did you have fun with uh, what we did here today? Yeah, it was good to work with the uh, Novas, and I, the setup was so great. It's uh, easy to do. Yeah, and I felt like this was just uh, an example, but I wanted to keep going. I, I like, know, Let's right? program more stuff. We more got music into cues. the programming at the end. Uh, what's it called? The magic, magic program. Magic program. So easy, and it's like easy to play with and change up. I had fun. I hope that you learned something new. I hope this was helpful for you, especially if you are going to a studio or if you are a uh, person who owns a studio and wants to rig lights up top. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you want to subscribe to our channel, it is Aperture. You're currently watching it. So why are you not subscribed? Just click that red button, click the bell icon notifications because who wouldn't want to get notifications? My name is Valentina V. My social media links are down below. Until next time, happy shooting. Bye. So long. All right, I'm leaving. <laughs>